So now that we have struts, we need to go ahead and create our project and configure struts. And the configuration is fairly simple. We're going to go over the basic manual configuration first. What I mean by this is we're not going to use conventions just yet. We'll get to that towards the end of this module. But we're going to start with the basic way of configuring it so that you can get a good understanding of how this works. So we're basically going to create our new project and we're going to do four things here in order to get started. We're going to configure the web.xml file. We're going to set this to basically use struts to handle the requests that are coming into our web server. Then we're going to configure our struts.xml file. So we're going to tell the struts.xml file where it can find the actions and what to map different actions to what view or result should they be mapped to so then we're going to add an action that's just going to be a very basic hello world type of action and then we'll add a view which will be a JSP page that will show to the user and so we'll hook all of this up and then we'll be able to run our application and this will just prove that we're using struts to display a view through our action. So the first thing that we're going to do is to go ahead and create a new project. I've went ahead and opened up Eclipse here and I'm just going to create a new project for our application. We're just going to go to File New and we're going to choose Dynamic Web Project and we'll call this Protein Tracker and we're going to go ahead and leave most of these things to the default here and we're going to click next and then we're going to click next here and then we're going to go ahead and let it generate this web.xml deployment descriptor because we're going to need that so i'm going to go ahead and click finish and so now you can see we've got our project here our protein tracker and if you're not familiar with a java project or a java web project basically what you have here is you have your source. So under Java resources, there's this source folder, and this is where you're going to put your source code. And then we've got this web content folder. And this is the basic structure of a Java web application. It contains this web content, and this is how it packages everything up. And under this web.inf, we have a lib directory where we're going to put our libraries for struts. And then we have this web.xml. And this web.xml acts as a configuration for our project. You can see it already has some default configuration in here. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the libraries that we're going to need for our struts app. And there's somewhat of a random assortment or seemingly random assortment of these jars that you'll need. But we're going to add just the basic ones here. And if you run into problems frequently, the cause is going to be, especially if it's a class loader problem, a missing jar. But here's the ones that we'll need uh, to, to start out here. So let's go ahead and go through these here. We're going to get the commons file upload. We're going to grab commons IO. We're going to grab commons lang. And the version may be different if you are viewing this video after the versions have updated here. So ignore the version part. We're going to grab this common link three. We're going to grab free marker here. And then we're going to get Java assist. And then we're going to need OGNL. And we're going to get our struts two core. And then finally, this Xworks core at the bottom here. And we'll go ahead and copy all these over. So we can basically just drag these files over to the lib directory, and we'll say copy files. And so now you can see all of our files are in here. So now we're set up to go ahead and actually create our basic struts application. So the next thing that we're going to do here is to configure that web.xml file. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this file. And what we're basically going to do is we're going to make it so that this web XML file is going to tell our application or our web server basically that whenever a request comes in, give it to struts and let struts handle it. And this is how we're basically inserting struts as our framework. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these welcome file lists. And I'm going to create a new node in here called filter. So 
So we'll do filter. And inside this filter, I'm going to create a couple of other elements here. So let's create one called filter name. And here we're going to define the filter name as struts2. This just lets us define what the filter is going to be. And then we say that the filter class is equal to, and I'm going to paste this in here so we don't have to type this all out. And this is basically just the name of the filter that is used by the struts framework. And so you can see that this is actually org.apache.struts2, dispatcher.ng.filter.struts, prepare and execute filter. Quite a mouthful here, but this is basically the class that's going to handle getting struts ready or figuring out what to do with a request when it comes in. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a filter mapping. And this is just going to map certain URLs to our filter. So we're going to say filter name, and we'll choose our struts to. And then we're going to choose how it's mapped or the URL pattern. And what we're going to do here is just say slash star. So basically, any URL that comes in is going to be mapped to this struts prepare and execute filter. Now the next thing that we're going to do here is create and configure our struts.xml file. And in struts, that struts.xml file is the main configuration for struts. This web.xml controlled our configuration for our application. And we're going to create a new file underneath our source folder. And we're going to call this struts.xml. So I'm going to go to other, I'm going to choose XML. And we'll make this XML file called struts.xml. So now we'll need to add a few things to the struts.xml. And basically, like I said before, this struts.xml file acts as the configuration for struts. So here we're going to basically tell struts what actions exist and what results they map to. So it's going to have this repository here that's going to tell struts how to handle the URLs that are being passed to it. So I'm going to paste this document type definition first. I'm just going to add this to the code here. And this just defines where the struts DTD is. And then we're going to add a element here, the main element called struts. And then underneath here, we can add some configuration. So we'll say package name is equal to main and we're going to say that it extends the struts default and the struts default is a package that you're going to extend most of the time because it contains the basic framework of struts and what i mean by this is it contains a lot of the interceptors that will do a lot of the basic actions that are involved in a struts action so for example the way that we can grab parameters that the user has entered into a web page is through an interceptor that is able to get those things and map them to our action. There's a lot of things that happen in this struts default stack here that basically allows us to not have to really worry about configuring everything ourselves. So you typically are going to want to extend the struts default. And what we're going to do here is inside this package, we're going to define an action. And remember, an action is basically a thing that is going to handle a URL for us and then return a result. So we're going to declare what the name of the action is. And we're going to say that it is hello in this case. And this is going to be basically the URL that we're going to use to access this. And we'll see in a little bit here exactly how that breaks out. But basically, we're going to have our application name slash hello. And because we have this name here, that's going to define that this action handles that particular URL. We're going to find the class that is going to handle this action. And in this case, we're going to create this class. We haven't done it yet. It'll be com.simpleprogrammer.helloaction. And you'll notice that in Java, you typically use your domain name or your company name backwards. So we'll have com.simpleprogrammer. And then this is the real 
name of the class that we're creating here. So we'll need to remember to create this in that namespace as well. And then we're going to define a result for this. So we're going to say result name equals success. And we're going to say, if you're successful, then we're going to go to hello.jsp. And this will make a little bit more sense in a minute here. But the basic idea is we're going to configure this action. We're going to say, OK, if you get a URL that has hello, then use this action class that we're going to define. And then this action class is going to be responsible for basically executing a method that returns a string. And if the name of that string matches success, then this is the view that you're going to display. And it happens to be a JSP page. So that's it for configuring our struts.xml for now. Now we actually have to implement the class and the view for the action and the result. Let's go ahead and start off by creating our action. So I'm going to go under our source directory. I'm going to do a new class here. And I'm going to call this hello action. And we're going to want this to actually implement an interface. So I'm going to go ahead and add an interface here. And that interface is going to be action. And we're going to use this Open Symphony XWorks 2 action. Make sure you pick the right one here. Now I'm going to go ahead and click finished here. And you can see that it automatically generated this method that I need to override here, which is execute. So really the only thing on the action interface is just this execute method. And we don't even have to implement action here. We just have to have a method named execute. But it's a little bit easier if you go ahead and implement that interface, because then you can see that it's supposed to have this execute method and the correct signature. So this execute method basically just needs to return a string. And remember, the string that an action returns is going to determine what view gets executed or what result happens afterwards. And we'll get more into this when we get into actually talking a lot more about actions in general. But for now, just know that we need to return some string here. So we're just going to return success automatically here. And what we're also going to do is we're going to define a message that we're going to display back. So let's just go ahead and make a greeting here. So I'm going to say greeting is equal to hello struts to our basic hello world type of application, just to prove that we're getting this to work here. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a field for greeting. And then I'm going to go ahead and create some getters and setters on this field. So and by doing this, what's going to happen is we're going to be able to use this field to basically pass information from our action to our view. And we'll talk a little bit more about how this magic happens later. But just know that this field's purpose is going to be to communicate with our view because if we set something, here, so we're setting our greeting, then this view is going to have a way that it can actually access this and get this data out. So when you think about how your action normally is going to work in your application, you're going to do some stuff. And then you might set some properties on your Java object here. And by setting them, you're going to make it so that the view can then grab that data and find the result that you created inside of your action. So that's it for our basic action. The only thing left to do is to make sure that we are in the correct package here. So remember, we need to set our package because we defined it inside of our struts.xml. So we're going to do package.simple programmer. So we've got com.simple programmer. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this to the right package here. And if you're wondering how I'm popping up those menus, if you're not familiar with Eclipse, if you hold down control and hit one, it'll give you some actions that you can do on various things inside of the IDE. Now the last part of our application is getting a view, we need to create that JSP page that we're going to use to display this greeting. So we're going to go to our web content here. And underneath here, we're going to do new and we're going to choose JSP file. And we're just going to call this hello JSP. And inside here, we're going to add 
this tag lib, which is going to give us access to the tag library for struts. And this has some special tags that allow us to access that data off of that action. And we'll talk about this a little bit more when we get into using the tags and creating results. But the basic syntax is we're going to do tag lib and we're going to say prefix here and we can use whatever prefix we want. Typically S is used and then we say what the URI is and this is going to be slash struts tags. And some of this is going to be just magical incantations at this point until we get into explaining this. But that's okay for now. Don't worry if you're not understanding exactly why we're doing all of these things just yet. Some of this is a bit of ceremony in this configuration. We're doing configurations a long way right now, but a lot of this will start to make more sense as we get more into the framework. So then the next thing we're going to do here is we'll just make our title. We'll say hello, and then we're going to use a tag that we imported here. So inside of our body, we're going to do an H1 here, and then we're going to do this S property, and we're going to set the value equal to greeting. And this is where we're basically telling this page or this tag to go into our hello action we define and get whatever is on greeting here. So we're going to get the text from greeting and that's going to be displayed here. And that's it. That's our simple application. Just to go over what we did here, we have our web XML telling all the requests to go to struts, to go to the dispatcher for struts. Then our struts.xml says, okay, when I get something, a URL, if it is inside of my application and it has that hello at the end of the URL, then I'm going to use this action, this hello action to handle it. That's in this namespace. And then when I finish executing this hello action, if the result I get back is a string success, I'm going to send the user to this hello.jsp. And inside of our hello.jsp, we're basically referencing that property that's going to be set on our action.